Over the last few weeks, many of you have noticed this black machine sitting here behind me, but very few of you actually knew what it was. But honestly, if you would have asked me about it about a month ago, I would have been right there with you. I mean, I fancy myself to be a bit of a home espresso guy, but the Crossland CC1 is one machine that hadn't made a single appearance on my radar. And this is somewhat surprising considering its classic design, feature-dense interface, and espresso heritage. And when I say espresso heritage, what I mean is the name Crossland actually comes from its designer and creator, Bill Crossland, who, if you're not familiar, was actually one of the lead designers on another legendary machine that also happens to be on my bar right now, the Lamarzoco GS3. But beyond them both being espresso machines, the CC1 occupies a completely different space, with a design and features reminiscent of household names like the Gaja Classic and Rancilio Silvia all while writing a price point that's nestled all nice and cozily right between them. So the question is, how does the CC1 measure up to the home espresso machines that seem to be dominating the home espresso scene? Well, that's what I'm looking to answer today, but first, a quick disclosure. I was loaned the CC1 by Pantechnicon Design out of Seattle, who are the main retailers of the machine. And it's not the first time I've worked with Pantechnicon, so we have a bit of a working relationship. So they understand my need to maintain non-bias by giving them no control or oversight over the contents of my review. But with all that out of the way, we're going to dive directly into the CC1 after a quick word from this video's sponsor, Native. Spring is here, and I know from experience that working in front of a hot espresso machine, next to a hot roaster, or even just hanging out in a cafe that refuses to turn up their AC, deodorant is a must. And if there's one that I always recommended even long before they were a sponsor, it was Native. For one, it just works, but also it's got no aluminum, no parabens, and just uses simple and effective ingredients. It also goes on dry and doesn't leave any sticky feeling or residues. I also really like that they offer a wide variety of clean and subtle scents. I chose sea salt and cedar for its classic woody smell, the powder and cotton because it reminds me of fresh laundry, and unscented because sometimes your boy just wants to smell coffee and fly under the radar but they've got plenty of other options for those looking to get noticed. And they also just dropped their brand new candy shop collection. So if you've ever wanted to smell like a gummy bear or a strawberry vanilla taffy, now's your chance. So click my link in the description and use codes Prometheus at checkout for 20% off your first purchase at Native. This offer is open site-wide, but it's only for a limited time, so stock up now and save. Much like many of the machines the CC1 is up against in this market segment, its design is pretty straightforward. At a glance, the Crossland CC1 feels very familiar, with styling and design cues that comes across like a love child of the Sylvia Pro and the Gaja Classic. Its body is almost entirely metal, apart from its buttons, drip tray case, and its 2 liter water reservoir. On its face you've got your controls, with its setup and menu buttons that also double as an enter and start button, as well as scrolling through the menus. And all those controls toggle settings and programming options that are contained on this backlit LCD screen. And we'll get more into using the settings in the next section, but for now as a brief overview there are some main points of interest. To start, there are three espresso shot settings that allow you to adjust pre-steam, which is actually pre-infusion, the wait time, which allows the water to saturate and essentially bloom and expand your grinds, and the dripping time, which is the total shot time that includes both pre-steam and wait times. Of course, as you'd expect with control over all of those settings, you've also got PID control over the single 500ml stainless steel boiler. But unexpectedly, the PID settings also allow you to set a brew temperature per shot program, which coupled with all the other settings, allows you to have a range of shot styles at the press of a button. Now when it comes to steam, this is where things get a little weird, because unlike many other single boiler espresso machines, it doesn't use a mechanism like a heat exchanger to create steam and brew water, but it also is still technically a single boiler espresso machine, while the steam is made in a separate boiler. Which is essentially an aluminum block with a heating element that pulls water through in short bursts that turns it to steam. You can even hear the pump pulsing as it pushes water into the steam boiler as it runs. But beyond those technical specs, the steam from there is pretty similar to a traditional single boiler, because it does need to be switched on separately, and only allows you to steam or pull at one time, not both. But speaking of pulling shots, the brew pressure is created via vibration pump, and it travels through a group design that sits partially below the boiler, giving it an additional heat stability, on top of it being a solid steel block. From there, brew water then flows into the group from the shower screen, and then into the commercial sized 58mm portafilter, which, as many of you may know, is a pretty sought after feature in most home machine spaces because of its compatibility with commercial baskets and tools. 
Now that we've got the overview out of the way and you've seen the CC1 both inside and out, let's brew some espresso. From a cold start, it takes less than 10 minutes to reach brew temp. But if you're a stickler for thermal stability, and I know that some of you are out there, you may want to tack on about another 10 to 20 minutes to get the portafilter and other peripheral pieces up to temp. From there, when it comes to brewing and shot settings, I found myself only messing with temperature, pre-infusion, and wait times. At the time of filming, I had one shot setting dialed in using light to medium roasts with a 203 degree brew temp, a 10 second pre-infusion, and a 5 second wait time to maximize the extraction. But regardless of the coffees I brewed and the settings I tested, the shots produced were full flavored and on par with shots from both the Sylvia Pro X and a slightly modified Gaja Classic. When it comes to making shots back to back, there is a short rebound time for the brew boiler, but in the time it takes to grind and weigh another dose, it should be back up and ready to brew. When it comes to steaming milk, I found the power and consistency of the CC1 to be well above that of the Gaja. But don't get me wrong, it's definitely not a fast steam wand. And with its single hole tip, you need to find the perfect point to get a vortex, especially with larger volumes of milk. But the slower heating and easy to manipulate knob does give you a lot of leeway and time to get the texture and angles right for that silky latte art ready microfoam. I've had the CC1 for a little over a month now. And to be honest, I don't have a whole lot to complain about, but there were a few things that I noted along the way that could be a turnoff to some folks. For one, there is no semi-automatic shot setting. You essentially have to set a drip time, which initially made for some shots ending too early or too late, since it auto shuts off when the time elapses. So I found myself maxing out the drip time at 100 seconds, so I could essentially start and end the shot all on my own. Much like the Gaja Classic, the CC1 has no pressure gauge. So you'll need to take Crossland's word that it's set to 9 bar from the factory. And there doesn't seem to be a clear answer about the pressure applied during pre-infusion, as the manual just says it wets the coffee before applying full pressure. But based on my tests, the pre-infusion pressure seems pretty high, as it pushes through the grinds rather quickly. The good news is the CC1 uses an open pressure valve or OPV, which means the pressure can be adjusted, but you also need a pressure gauge on your portafilter or some other way to measure it to make accurate adjustments. The bad and seemingly obvious news is the CC1 isn't nearly as popular as the Gaja or the Sylvia, so there isn't a massive database of users and modifications out there for you to pick and choose from. So if you want to go down that road, it may be a bit more of an adventure. But for those who do like to tinker, there does seem to be a lot of room under the hood, so it may work out. Looking back into my experience with the Gaja Classic or Sylvia Pro X, it does seem like the CC1 does a great job at blending the best aspects of both into a very capable, affordable, feature-dense middle ground machine. And after the time I spent with it, I have a hard time understanding why it hasn't been a more popular option for those looking for a home espresso machine with a good amount of control and repeatability. The $700 Crossland CC1 easily outperforms the $400 Gaja Classic, especially for talking out of the box, which I think for the price is to be expected. But up against the Sylvia Pro X, the CC1 also has a wider range of extraction control, with up to 15 seconds on pre-infusion and 5 seconds on wait time, which gives you more control over the extraction than the Sylvia Pro X's 6 soft infusion settings. Also, its array of presets gives single press repeatability and convenience for those multiple coffee households. In the end, the Pro X only slightly edges out the CC1 in terms of workflow because of its dual boiler capabilities, but whether or not that's worth the $1,200 price difference is up to you and what you're looking to get out of your machine. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Crossland CC1? Have you heard of it before? Are you one of the few handful of owners out there? I'd love to hear from you. Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like share and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, and as always stay caffeinated. Pony boy.